the book Dragon Slayer. And here I am, bawling my eyes out already. Yet I can't forget it. I can't forget that day. That one moment. But I, I brought you the flowers. And I remember when we used to get them. We used to pick them around in the woods. When we were wee ones, yeah. all three of us would. Oh, Ali. Oh, Colleen. Yeah. Oh, Kalarmi. Oh, Cider. Um, I just I, I wanted to pay my respects to you again and see your graves again. So I bought a drink and I thought maybe we might just gaze at the stars here like I always do when I see when I see your graves. Gaze at the stars like we used to when we were young. But I can't do anything here about it. You can't change the past no matter how many times you kick and you scream and you beg. No matter how many deals you're willing to make. You can never, ever change the past. Oh, damn it. Damn bottle opener. And there you have it. A bottle of hard cider. Here's to you, me loves. And may I get drunk and hurt. May I wake up in the morning sore and hurting. It's the very least I deserve. For not doing anything, for not saving you, it's the very least I deserve. Here's to you, me darlings. Uh. <sighs> oh, oh, but you're sweet. It's fitting. You two always did call me the bittersweet love. <laughs> you're never scared of me. Just 
despite I being her banshee, and I suppose that's one of the reasons why I loved you both, and saw you as siblings, as family. I loved you more than anything, and who's there? Who's there? Show yourself. Come on out. Show yourself. I'm warning you. I'll scream. I'll scream. A human. A human. What are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. This is a sacred ground. It is sacred and special. Special to me. Not that it's any of your business. Now go away. Go on. Go away. Leave me alone. Leave me to my drinking. Go on. Go away. Leave me alone. I want to be alone. Well, you're just standing there. Staring at me. I know. I know I'm a banshee. I'm the stuff of nightmares. I know. I know, so, so go away. Go away, you don't even belong here anyway. This place is special. It's not meant for the humans. Just go away. Aren't you scared of me? I'm a banshee. I bring nothing but death and misery and wake and, and warning in my wake. I curse people with my screams. So go away. Go away and leave me alone. You're coming close. Get away from me. Get away from me. I swear. I'll scream. I'll scream. I won't. I won't. I can't. I, I promise them they never had another human. I promise them. She's always crying. Yeah. She's always crying, so what's it to you? I shouldn't be alone. I want to be. I should be. After all. After all, I'm the reason. I'm the reason why they're dead now. Why the only two humans I ever cared about are gone. Two humans who I saw as family, who I loved more than anything. They're gone. They're all gone, drowned in the briny, and it's all because of me. <laughs> because I was a coward. Are we close? Very. But they're gone now. And even in their death, I can't break my promise. Though I want to. I want to scream. I want to scream and drive you mad. But I can't. Consolation. You do know. You know exactly how I feel. You lost someone special too, huh? It's... it's hard to be okay with that feeling. I'm surprised at you. That you're able to understand my pain. To an extent. Yeah, I thought all you humans... Safe for... for them. 
one prudes always ready to kill and destroy anything that isn't like you. I always thought you kind, your kind despised monsters like me. After all, nothing good ever comes from a banshee. Are you trying to make me choke? What do you want anyway? Uh, what's my name? My name? What should I tell you? Manners? Maeve. My name is Maeve. My friends. You used to call me maybe. I said my friends. You call me that again and I will make you mad. I will kill you. So don't you ever, ever call me that name again. That was their name for me. And no one is ever allowed to use it again. Because they're dead. Well, 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 little human, what do they call you? What's your name then, eh? I... Relax, I'm not gonna steal your name away or anything. That's what the fair folk do. Beautiful fair folk. You give them your name and then they own you. It doesn't work with us banshees. So come on, tell me, what's your name? It's the least you can offer me after you trespassed onto a sacred place. Hmm. It's a fitting name, fitting for a foolish human like you to not run away from a banshee like me. You're a special kind of fool, aren't you? Are you just not afraid? Did you never learn the meaning of the word fear? Do you not know how to fear? Hmm. I see. If you had been one of those people, then you would have been like that one folk. That one lad who did not know how to fear and had to learn it. Of course, he learned it by nearly losing his sweetie. He learned how to shudder that day. So why were you out here in the middle of the night? Uh, running away? Why would you do something as foolish as that? Ah, uh, so that's why. Trouble's at home. That's why you're running away. Step family. There are lots of people who've had step family. And they've turned out just fine. I've heard about them. I've seen them from afar. You can't run away from your troubles. It only leads you into getting into more trouble. Trust me, I know. I know from experience. What were their names? Sometimes it helps if you have someone to listen. You really ain't gonna leave me alone. Until I f until you attempt to make me feel better. You're really not going to leave me alone until you try and make that happen, are you? Stop a little human. Colleen and Killarney. 
Colleen was a dead harvest shoemaker in Killarney. Yeah. He and his family would sell potatoes and cabbages and other fruits of the earth. They were gardeners. If I remember right, Killarney's dad often was hired by the aristocratic folk royalty to tend to their gardens, make them bloom and make them pretty. <laughs> yeah. And Colleen, well, she was skilled at making shoes just like her, her mom and her dad. She actually made a really pretty pair for me on the, on the my birthday. I, I, they were lovely. They were white satin with little gold heels and pearls sewn right into the toe. I still have no idea how she managed it. <laughs> well, on my birthday, uh, Kildani would always bring me a bouquet of flowers and every bouquet would always say some sort of special special message in the blooms. Yeah. Well, of course, I believe, I believe the, the science of humans call it floriography, the art of communicating to people through the flowers. I used to do it all the time with me friends. You see, those flowers are put on the graves the flowers with the purple petals that turn white at the tips. Uh huh. Those, those are called the emery thistle. Funny enough, because they aren't really thistle. They're actually more akin to clover, but the name just stuck. But emery thistle in the floriography means always in my heart. It's a very special flower. And we used to pick them together when we were children. <laughs> since, since, since that day, I, uh, I always make sure to bring them some memory thistle. I always visit their grave in a place, usually a bouquet or Sometimes even a single flower on the graves, and I visit them, I drink, and I look at the stars, like we used to when we were young. I've tried so many times getting drunk. I want to hurt. I feel like I owe that to them. For, for ruining everything. What happened to them? Why are you so damned and determined to comfort me? Why? Why are you so determined to try and make me feel better? Why do you want to know about my two friends? Why? Why are you so curious? Answer me that, and I'll try and tell you. <sighs> All right. <sighs> so, Killarney and Colleen and I, we used to do everything together. We grew up together. They were the only two humans in the world who weren't afraid of me, because I'm a banshee and all. And so, I saw them as family, and I loved them. I loved them more than anything because I didn't feel ashamed of being myself. I didn't feel afraid of myself. They made me feel comforted. They made me feel warm. They made me feel like I was alive again. They made me feel loved. And, and I always enjoyed that. It was pleasant. A patch of light. Among the clouds, that is the life of a banshee, my family, 
and I, we were always running, always trying to run away from the humans. Because we know, we know what our screams and our cries bring, what happens if our combs are picked up. We know, and so we try to hide, we try to make sure that we don't drop our combs when we comb our hair. We try to make sure we get on the laundry when we're washing them. We just try to avoid you. But they... They sought me out willingly. They played with me. They loved me. And I cared for them so much. And I, I showed them. I showed them parts of my world. Parts that you humans don't really know of. Places that are very easy to find if only you know where to look. Then, well, we got too close to the territory. I, the territory of the fair folk. We had always heard stories. My, my mom and my dad, they, they took to Colleen and Killarney and they sort of adopted them. Sort of, considered them family as well. And they always told us stories. They, they always told me. I, Maeve, you mind the fae folk. You stay away from their territory. You don't give them your name. You have nothing to do with them. They're dangerous folk. Even more dangerous than we are because they don't look like they're dangerous. They look lovely. But beauty often hides threats. If you're not careful, they warned us always. <sighs> oh, they always warned us. And, well... And there was also the word of mouth from the other children. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the fair folk. They're sweet and they're wonderful and they always invite you to dance. And they feed you sweets and they pet you and they cuddle you and they kiss you and they love you. And they're much better than any old mother and father in the village. They let you do whatever you want. And all you have to do is smile sweetly at them and compliment their pretty wings and such. No, 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 no. They're dangerous. None of them listened. Then, well, word of mouth led to another, and then Colleen and Killarney became curious. And then, then that day happened. What happened on that day? Well, we were playing, we were playing hide and seek, and then then uh, we we had finished playing, and then uh, Colleen stumbled upon the ring first. See, oh, what was that sound? Ah. Uh, it was again. Well, it's probably just a rabbit or a cat. Either a rabbit or a cat with the sneezes. Either way. But uh, Colleen found the ring first, and with the fair folk, they always keep a ring of mushrooms around their territory. Or at the very least, their territory is dotted with rings of mushrooms. It's where they usually dance, but they have certain parts of the forest that are their territory. Uh, and Colleen remembered what the people in the village had said, the young men and women, who were also enamored by the fair folk and saw nothing wrong with them. They saw the ring, Colleen and Killarney did, and they wanted to go see the fair folk for themselves. I warned him. I warned him that we shouldn't. That's dangerous. I told him to remember what me, mom, and my father said to them. But they didn't listen. They, they walked past me like I was invisible. And if I had half a mind, like I should have, I would have grabbed them by the, the back of their shirts and dragged them away from there. But I didn't. I, I went after them. I followed them. I didn't want them to get hurt, so I I went with them, and 
we saw many beautiful things, but I knew this was dangerous. I knew it wasn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't have to tell you if I don't want to. Let me have more of the drink. like little cats running about. I always liked cats. But anyway, I, I followed them and we had come across a spot, a bit of a walk from here, a very special spot. It was where the, fa the fairy folk, it was damned their beings came to dance and bathe in the moonlight. Colleen and Killarney were enamoured by it. But I kept warning them, I kept telling them that we ought to go back, that they'd seen what they wanted to see, and that we should go back and leave this place. But just as I was going to reach for them, the fair folk came. They approached, I could hear them coming from a mile away, and when they came across my two friends, I... I was a coward. I hid from them. You don't know much of anything, do you, human? I should be getting angry, but... There's such a thing as the food chain with monsters. Banshees are below the fair folk, and the fair folk go above us banshees. And uh, the fair folk, cruel beings that they are, they, they were cordial to my friends and they asked for their names. But my friends, when they didn't reveal their names, the fair folk, they, they, they brought them to the pool and they drowned them was a game to them to watch my friends to watch humans struggle and scream and beg for help I I I wanted to help them I wanted to rescue them I should have I should have but if I came if I if I tried to go after them they would have outnumbered me and then they would have taken me away to do with me whatever they would. So, so I, I was a coward and I watched them. I watched them drown my friends, my darlings, my loves. I watched them drown them. And I watched them sink down. I watched them sink down, down. Down into the briny. <laughs> it was all my fault. I should have saved him. I should have been better. I shouldn't have been such a coward. <laughs> Why are you hugging me? Why are you touching me? No. Don't stop. I. I like it a little, but that was that. Oh, oh, I, when the fair folk left, I, I found their bodies, and I buried them here, where we used to play, our old stomping grounds, as it were. To this day, I've just been bringing them hemory thistles and drinking to them and apologizing over and over and over again. I should have done more, I should have been better, but I can't change the past. And, and now I don't really know what to do with my life.
what what you would call a banshee's life. I don't know. There, I told you now. Are you happy? You think I ought to be able to move on and not let the past hold me down? That's easier said than done, human. What would you do then? Oh, you would give yourself time to mourn and then move on slowly, piece by piece. All right. How long have I been mourning? Oh, almost a year. I, maybe a year. And no, no, I don't remember. I've been mourning for a year and 13 weeks now to this very day. You wish, you wish to help me. I don't know what you can do. You're just a human and I am a banshee. It's my nature to be heartbroken, especially about something like this. You're willing to be my friend, at least. Bless you, then, I guess. The cats seem to be playing some more. They seem to be playing with some fabric or something. I can hear them from afar. Tell you what. I have a little place that I'm living in by myself currently. Tell you what, you can stay with me for a bit until you're ready to go home. If you're gonna be my friend, then you got to promise me that you will go back home and then you won't run away. Dear? All right. I'll let you stay with me for seven days, and then well, we'll figure out where we're gonna go from there. All right, all right, it's a deal then.